Hello and welcome. I'm Julia Barbaro, host of the Julia and Gino podcast. I'm here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and co-host, Gino Barbaro. Hi, Jewel. Hey, baby. <laughs> Congratulations is in order no. for you. Thank you, baby. We're launching the third kid's book. And I know it's a labor of love, <laughs> but you're still not with me. I've got four books. So you still got one more to, one uh, okay. more, one more to Here's get. Here's the thing. <laughs> I am not normally competitive, but I feel it. Like I'm feeling it today. So she, just no, watch When out. somebody says they're normally not competitive, well, it really means they normally are competitive. Yeah, they well, just don't want to show I don't know if anyone knows Gino personally, <laughs> but it's really hard to play a game with you or try to anything because you're very competitive. And sometimes I just back off. But, you know, I feel like you challenge me. The, like you challenged me. <laughs> we're going to dive into this because when I was reading the book, I'm like, this is a little struggle. I'm not sure if I like the story, but as I got into it, it just became so crystal clear for me. And I think community has played such an important part of our lives, going all the way from when my wife came home to me one day and says, I think we're going to homeschool. And I'm like, first of all, what's homeschooling? And second of all, aren't our kids going to grow up to be weird? <laughs> and I really thought that. But if it wasn't for the homeschool community that we had up in New York, that made it a lot easier to get together. And, and then obviously, when we moved down to Florida, it was the same thing. The community that, that that's down here that has homeschoolers in it, it was just an amazing thing. Also, for me, the restaurant up in New York, I felt as if I was part of the community through all the ups and downs of the restaurant and working on the holidays and not making money. The one thing that brought joy to me and my wife made me understand this. I didn't even think about it at the time. Being part of the community may pack being I don't want to say a pillar of the community, but everyone knew who we were. We, we were providing great meals. We were doing bar mitzvahs, communions, confirmations. We were doing weddings. We were catering food to all these different events. And to me, that brought such joy. When I look back at it, I'm like, oh man, I affected these people. They had a great party on the lake in the summertime shooting off fireworks and their food was really good. Where'd you get the food from? Oh, I got it from Gino's. And it made me really feel proud. And it felt like I was delivering some type of impact. I was impacting other people's lives mm -hmm. in a positive way. And I think community is such an important aspect of it. And I know I'm going rambling on, Joel. But one more thing that I like to say about community before we really dive into the show is we're losing bits of community. And I remember when my, when my mother came to this country from Italy, we went back to her town last year. We're going back again this year. And one thing that struck me was all the houses are really close to each other. Everyone knows each other. They had a sense of community. Now, they were poor, but they always had a place to go if they needed something, whether they needed a piece of bread or they needed some type of seeds to plant or they needed to borrow something. There was always something there. And that community was such an amazing component to them that when they came to this country, that's why you have Chinatown and Little Italy. They continue that community. And I grew up in a community that if I ever needed anything, my mom was always there for me. I had cousins and aunts and uncles. They were always helping and that community is so important. And that's why I love the way Julia wrote this book. It really touched upon the aspects of community, how you can create a community for yourself and how you can leverage others to help you with your journey and how you can help others. Yeah. Thank you for rambling. That was a ramble. <laughs> I want to go back to the part where you said when you first were reading the book, you weren't sure in, about instead, it. I kind of want to go in, there instead for Instead of saying, second. boy, that was great. You said some really great stuff. Thank you for the ramble. No, you, you, yeah. You, you always have a lot of good things to say and I appreciate that. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I don't want to talk all about the book, but I, I write the book really for all of us. It's not just for kids. It's, it's, you know, it's really what I talk to everyone else about just in kid form. And, and in the earlier in the book, in the beginning, you know, the characters are basically saying, okay, I got it all together. Now what's next. And, and a lot of times, you know, depending on what part of life we're in, you know, I kind of feel like that's where I was just a few years ago. It's like, okay, I raised the kids, you know, I'm still raising them, but Kind of got it figured out. You know, like Gino said, we have this great community of friends and the kids have friends. And, and she got a great husband. Got this amazing husband well. who just is amazing. I can't even talk so highly about you. <laughs> but now it's kind of like, okay, what's next? And and I and I was feeling that. And that's why it's in the book. It's, you know, almost like, all right, I'm waiting for the next problem or the, or the next part of my life to happen. And I'm just kind of sitting here waiting. And I realize is that we are creating this through the Jake and Gino community. Um, through other other organizations that we're working with as well, we do create these communities and we need them because we crave them. We're not supposed to be doing all of this by ourselves. Like you said, 
you know, whether it's school or raising a family or, you know, trying to just be a father in the world, a lot of times or, or mother, we just, I got to figure it out by myself. And we think it's like very noble of us to, I got to do it myself. It's kind of like a selfish thing in a sense, because we're supposed to be doing things together. We're supposed to be getting maybe some advice or, or something from the, the older crowd, from the wiser crowd. And we've lost that a lot of times because a lot of us are moving away, away from family, and we're trying to figure things out by ourselves. And, and I just encourage everyone is just to think, okay, what part of community am I in right now? And, you know, a lot of times we're not in a community. We're not part of something. And this is an opportunity that maybe you could create one. Maybe you could say, okay, what type of community am I craving? Where can I find these people? And try to start something on your own if you're not in something. And, and I think that a lot of times we don't think about it. We're like, I can't find anything. I can't find my people. You know what I mean? I can't find the people I want to hang out with. Create it. You go out and do the search and find the people because they're craving it as well. COVID changed a lot three years ago. And life was going on. Then all of a sudden we got shut down. We became isolated. Isolation leads to fear, leads to depression, leads to negative thoughts. And then all of a sudden... You're saying to yourself, the scarcity. And in the book, we talk about scarcity versus abundance. You know, the first book, they were just trying to figure it out, these three characters. And Rhino looked like he was the one who had it all together and he went out and got the job, started the business. But now, right now, they're, they're sort of bored. And, and they, they went from the scarcity mindset to now in this third book, it's about the abundance mindset. And I think that's what community allows you to do. It's like, okay, I've got this. I'm financially free. Because most of us, we think we're, we're, we're working for money. We're working really for autonomy. I think autonomy leads to our happiness where we can decide to sit down and do a podcast together or we can write a kid's book. And that, that, that's what ultimately brings us joy. I think money is just the result. So don't focus on the money. You focus on the the, the things that will bring you the joy because money can just you know help you out. It's just a result. But when I look at the book, that scarcity versus abundance, and then the characters in, in there themselves, they're looking at their sole purpose. They're looking at what lights a fire underneath them mm-hmm. and what can they bring to the community and what attributes do they have. And one of the characters is really creative. He starts a podcast. Mm-hmm. And then once you start the podcast, you're on an island, you're all by yourself. Well, how do I get these ideas and community is a way to do it. For me, I think the first community that I truly joined, this may sound crazy, but I think it was probably partnership with Jake. That was our little community, just me and Jake working together, having that partnership, not allowing to let him down and working towards that partnership, showing up every day to work on real estate Mm -hmm. as my side hustle. And Jake is my partner. Jake is my community. Then from there, all of a sudden, we started growing. Then we had other investors come on board. And we started the Jake and Gino community that figured out it's not just about me making money anymore. I want to create some type of impact. Because I thought my sole purpose in life was try to help others get into real estate, become financially free. I saw what it did for me. And it was so important for what it did for me that it gave me optionality. I didn't have to stay in New York. I didn't have to stay in that one restaurant. I could really do something that I enjoyed to do. I could work towards my sole purpose. And that's why I created the Jake and Gino community. And now we have hundreds of students in there all doing the same thing. And I see selfishly during COVID, all these lockdowns, we continue to have these events. And we'd have people driving down from various states that were locked down just to come to the event. And there's something about getting people in a room that they they feel part of something bigger than themselves. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like an open source where I'm, I'm, I'm able to like share what I have and I'm not being threatened by it because in our community, it's a team sport multifamily. So if you want to be part of something, I have this skill. Do you have that skill? You start matching it in. And I saw how important community was during COVID. And I'm thankful that we had the Jake and Gino community because it pulled me through. It had mm-hmm. me doing going to these events, whether they were 50 people, 80 people, 100 people, just getting together and getting away from that fear and that isolation. And that's what community allowed us to do. Well, you just mentioned something that was important is that people were craving to be together during that time, they were literally driving like 17 hours <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that they that? never would have yes. had, had this happened. And it really did prove something is that we need each other. And, and a lot of times we're afraid of each other, right? So, cause we're, what can I offer? This guy's, you know, better at whatever than me. And I, I can't offer it. And that's actually goes in the book is that each one of us, like you said, we do have something unique to offer. You know, a lot of, a lot of us listeners, I'm and, and me included, like I have nothing to offer. I don't really have the education the other person has or the way that they speak or whatever it is, you know, you can make every excuse in, in, in the book and you do have something to offer because you're and all of our 
experiences in life are very unique to us and how we handle them and how we share that with other people. We could connect with them they, that they don't, they've never talked to someone in our, in our situation before. So that just by itself is that unique gift that we can offer the community. And I just encourage everyone, like I said earlier, take a look, who is your community? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And what needs to change? Because sometimes, like I said earlier, we're just kind of like figuring out what the next step is. Where are we? Gino mentioned the podcast and the book and, and, and the character, the creative caterpillar. He actually did start a podcast, but he didn't have any topics. And so what did he do? He didn't quit like many of us do. We try something out. It's not working. What do we do? Somebody else offered their talent of connecting. So we might be, have this great talent of connecting people and that is a gift in it itself because some of us don't have that. And so my point is, if you're trying something new, whether it's community oriented or not, keep trying it. If something doesn't work, try it again. You know, we tell our kids that all the time, don't give up. And here we are giving up half the time. So it kind of take our own advice. As Two parents. quotes that I like to share. First thing is mm -hmm. get going, then get good. Jack Butcher said it. I read it on his Twitter feed. And it stuck with me. I feel like that's every mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> everyone. Dream. Yes. Because you took don't have it. took us 18 months to find our yeah. first deal. Get going. If yeah. I'm worrying about everything, all the stars to align, it's not yeah. time. If I said to my wife, well, when it's time, we'll have a baby. We didn't have, we don't have any kids. That's the thing. <laughs> it's get going and then get good. And, you know, at MM6 this year, our multifamily mastery conference of the year, it's October 14th and 15th. Go to jakeandgina.com forward slash MM6. I want to see you there. A community of 1,200 investors are going to be there. Chris Voss is speaking. And one of the things that Chris Voss says that I find to be very interesting and enlightening, he talks about curiosity. Be curious because when you're curious, you can't be fearful. Mm -hmm. So if you're afraid and constantly in that fear mode, we'll start questioning things. What would it look like to be in a community? How can I add value to the community? All of a sudden, you can't be curious and fearful at the same time. You start having these ideas and these thoughts. And that's why community is so powerful. Why is community so powerful? I think two reasons. Number one, the networking. Obviously, you're, you know, you're surrounded by a ton of other people. But it's the accountability. At the Women of Wheel of Our Profits calls, they have these weekly calls for the women. Thank God I'm not on that call. Oh, oh, I could he pops not, in I cannot imagine. <laughs> well, it's really important because it's an accountability. Because yeah. if we're all by ourselves, we can get away with stuff. But if we're on a call, if we're in a community and we need to do something by next week and we need to get something prepared, we're not going to let the community down. We'll mm -hmm. let ourselves down. We won't let the community down. So be curious. Start being curious as to, as to how you can fit into a community. Like Julie said, how do I create my own community? And you don't have to start with thousands mm -hmm. and thousands. There's no such thing as an overnight success. You look at all these people who are super successful today, you think they just, no, they've been working at it. They've got their true mission. They've got their true calling. They figured out what they want to impact. And it's one day at a time. It's one community member at a time and try to figure out how you want to serve the community try to figure out what type of community it is for us in the jake and gino community you know simple we're, we're really targeting people with families people of faith not specifically but that's who seems to gravitate towards us we want to really target people who want to become financially free through investing in real estate that that's part of the community then we have a lot of tools to do that but when you're looking for a community make sure that their their ideas their goals their vision resonates with your vision. That becomes down to what the leader of the community looks like. And as long as you can resonate with that person, that is a good community fit for you. Yeah. You mentioned the women, the women who are profits. And I just, again, I've talked about that before, um, but the importance of it, I, I just want to, you, you talk, I love when you talk about it because <laughs> you're not there. You just have this thing. And I, but it, I it's can only imagine it's unbelievable because we start talking and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you went through that. And I think just that alone, it's worth to come on. You know, if you're, if you're a member of Jake and Gino, please come on because it, it's the moment when you realize you're not alone. Because a lot of times we do things, whether it's raising a family, being married, just being an entrepreneur, just being, just being a woman in this, in this situation, because we're talking women. And to, to, to talk to other people and to listen to their stories and realize that they go through struggles just like you, and maybe you don't talk to anybody about it, but, but it's like, okay, it kind of gives you hope 
It's like, okay, I, I could get through this because I know someone has my back. And that's what I'm talking about. This, this little community, I mean, I started it and maybe two people were on at first. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it's literally the three of us on the, on the call. But just sometimes those are the best calls because they're so deep. The conversation is so deep. It's funny because last time we, I talked about this um, through a podcast, my husband was like, I think I'm going to start the men's group. And it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened yet, Gino. Why hasn't it happened, Julia? Because you don't want to put another thing on your plate. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm guessing. You have these great or, ideas. Or you're super afraid of what, what will come through it. Because I, it, we get really deep and emotional. I'm not kidding. But my gosh, the what comes out of this is amazing. Because like you said, other people know what you're talking about. So you're going to be like, okay, I know, you know, whoever, Michelle, he heard what I was going to say. I'm going to do it because next week I'm going to get on the call. And I'm going to say, listen... I did what I said I was going to do. It's that count accountability, mm -hmm. right? I'm just teasing you. No, yeah. you're not. You, you want, and that's the thing. <laughs> it, 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 it's a lot of work and, and sometimes we want to shy away from that. But it's something that I've been thinking about. It's on my heart. I, I want to create something. But how do you do it? There's a lot of mechanics going into it and get well, going you before you, you get how good. Do you do it? Well, it's not how do you do it. Like what's the structure? How are we going to be talking? Like uh, what are the topics we just get on? Though these are all questions as I'm thinking out loud. I'm, I'm hoping the listeners are saying, okay, how do I start a group? How do I start a men's group? Or how do I start a woman's mm -hmm. group? Or how do I start a real estate and group? Or how do I get together a meetup? Whatever that looks like. And we've done meetups before where we've gone to in Jacksonville where we've gotten 30 or 40 people together and done them monthly. For me, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. And like you said, I do have a lot on my plate right you now. You do. So I do. I'm, I'm already working with – a group right now, the Jake and Gino, you know, the community, that education group. And it's, it's challenging. You don't, I don't want to spread myself too thin because mm -hmm. I want to, I want to focus mm -hmm. on that. But Julia, getting back to the book really mm -hmm. quick in the book, you, you say, finding your own unique gift. Can you, t can you talk about that a little bit? Cause everyone on this call, we all have our own unique sure. gifts and it seems as if the character struggled. And then ultimately if I'm not mistaken, it seems like community was not was one of the gifts that they, that they were able to create. Well, I, I love, you know, my favorite, I feel like he's the main character is the, is the pity party pig. You know what I mean? He was the, oh, something bad happens in the first book and he freaks out, buys TVs, eats a lot. You know what I mean? He does what we all do. We, we kind of hide in our own home. We hide from people when something bad happens. And then through the second book, he realized, um, you, you know, little by little, it's who you surround yourself by and who, all of a sudden he's noticing, and this is in our life too, all the people that are encouraging us, that are around us all the time, but we're choosing the wrong person. We're hanging out with the hyenas who are telling us, let's go play video games instead of like, you know, that encouraging person that's saying, hey, why don't you come and, and we're, we're, we're actually getting more education. And so it's that awareness of who we're surrounding ourselves with and who we're listening to in that second book. And in the third book, I love because he, it's almost like he realizes, you know, mud is his, you know, we always get stuck in something. So mud is his, you know, his, his he, he always falls in the mud and he, and he poor me type of thing. And he's very cautious of his mud now. So he jumps over it. He, he cleans it up with the mop. And so he's more aware of his, his difficulties and he realizes his strengths are connecting people to helping people. He, he's, he's learned a lot throughout his struggles and now he's going to offer his services to other people. He's like, here's what I learned and now I'm going to help you learn the same thing. And that's what I was saying earlier is that, that our unique gift sometimes is just our experience in life. Like as a mom, I've had a lot of things happen to me over the, over the 25 years of being a mother and, and being a wife to you, you know what I mean? Because you're an entrepreneur and I had to figure out where I fit into that. And sometimes my experience is really my gift. It's like that was the hardest part of my life and it became what I could help other people with. Maybe your your unique gift is, you know, my husband, like his education that he teaches. He's so he's so amazingly gifted in teaching education. Maybe that's your gift. You know, you have to figure out where you are in life and what your experiences are and what you can offer at that moment. Because a lot of times we're like, well, I went to school 20 years ago, but I don't rem remember it. So, well, it's probably no longer you're that, maybe you shouldn't use that. You know, where are you right now in life and what can you offer the community that you're gonna either create or you're gonna enter? We've married, Does that make sense? We've been married a quarter of a century <laughs> in a month. It's been a long, it's a long time. time. Yeah. And as you're saying the pity party pig, I was a pity party pig. 
I was hiding in the in the kitchen. I was washing mm-hmm. dishes. I wasn't doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing. I wasn't going out buying TVs, but I was definitely hiding. I mean, how many of you out there can resonate mm-hmm. with that story? You're mm-hmm. hiding. And then you have the enlightenment. All of a sudden, you meet a Jake. And you're like, this is the person I want to hang around with. Then you start listening to Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar. And you start listening to different things. And you turn off the news. And you start filling yourself with great stuff. And that's what the pig did. And that's what, and that's what, and that's what I ended up doing. And then I actually started a podcast. And I created the community. And so my, my life very eerily mirrors the story of Pig in there. And I don't think I'm a connector, but very similar to what he was able to do with his life. And now all of a sudden you get to a point where how do I really create impact? And that's what your focus is. You're focused on not just chasing the money or chasing the opportunity. And I think that's what Pig is doing. I think that's what we all want to ultimately do. We're taught to chase the money. We got to do all these deals. But if you can really think about chasing the opportunity, like Pig starts doing in the third book, all of a sudden, your life goes to a whole nother level. The more opportunities you get, the money will ultimately follow. Yeah. And I think, too, you know, we we're talking about our experiences and, you know, we're talking about kids. We're trying to teach the kids how to handle how to handle difficulties or, you know, when something bad happens, how to handle that, how to handle fear and stress. And we try to teach all our children these things. And the, they're learning from from our experiences. They're learning how we handle the stress of work, mm-hmm. the stress of marriage, if there's stress. I'm not saying there's stress in our marriage, but they're 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 learning by our reactions to fear, our reactions to you know major stresses that come into our life. You know, maybe one of our family members is you know overwhelms us. They learn from how we react to them, mm-hmm. and 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 it's really important that we maybe it's the time to have that awareness, like I was talking about before, the awareness of our reactions to all of these things that happen when something bad happens, what do we do? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we just try to lecture to to our children or whoever we're talking to. I encourage you to just take a step back and maybe write this. How, How do we, how do we react when something wrong happens? How do we react when, you know, or, or who do we hang out with? We can go in the second book. Who are we hanging out with? Write down who you hang out with. Is that the person we want to hang out with? Because our kids are seeing that. They see who we hang out with. They see who we listen to, who we get advice from. They see all this. You don't have to even tell them anything. You don't have to say, here's a lesson for you. They are watching the lesson in life live, you know, and then going into the third book, it's like, how are you giving back? Now that you've gone through all your life lessons, you know, until now, what are you doing with them? What are you doing with your gifts? You know, I, I, I know our, our kids see this. We were, we were at church the other day and, and the priest was talking about, um, about giving back, basically, you know, giving someone water when they're thirsty, just the basic things that we were called to do. And Sophia said later, she's like, mom, that's you. I watched you do that. She's like, you just invited a family that you don't even know. You've never met these people. My, you know, somebody in my family knows of them. She's like, you're doing exactly what you're called to do. And I didn't say anything because I was like, wow, that's amazing. It's beautiful when people notice it in your family and it's a lesson that they'll always take with them. And you didn't say anything. You know, it was purely watched. That lesson was watched from my kids. And I just, yeah. So my wife gave you some practical tips. What I'm going to tell you to do is (laughs) go to jakeandgina.com forward slash coloring pages. You're going to see the first Two books on there, videos on there. You're going to see some downloads for your kids as well. You're going to see the third book on there. You can purchase the third one. I really want you to buy the books. They're not expensive. Skip Starbucks for a day or two. You can buy the book and you'll have the book with you forever. There's lessons in the back to talk with your children because it's amazing. You may read something and you may get one lesson and one of your children may get another lesson mm-hmm. completely different from it. And you're like, wow, I never thought of that. And to be able to start that discussion, because one of the hardest things is to start a discussion with your children mm-hmm. about money, about responsibility, about life lessons, about finding a mentor, about being that person that you're trying to teach them to be. But starting with these books, yeah. it's, it's a great way to start. So go to jakeandgina.com forward slash coloring pages and buy the book. Yeah. This has been a fun podcast. Anything else? Yeah. I, I love this because I love this whole topic of community. Um, I don't think we put enough enough thought into it. Maybe, you know what I mean? Enough conversation, especially amongst spouses. We could talk about who we're hanging out with as couples. 
um, and who our community is. So I just encourage everyone is just, you know, take a few minutes and reflect and be aware of your surroundings, of your community. And maybe it's time to start one. Maybe it's time, time to create one of, of, you know, maybe like-minded people who want also to succeed. Super important. We're not going into a community that's going to bash husbands and bash wives and, and, you know, talk about how difficult life is. Go find a community that follows your values. Some, someone that you connect with in that sense, because that obviously it's who you're hanging out with is like we talked about, but hundred percent. Yeah. Thanks for spending part of your day with us and allowing us, you know, come into your home and, and share this message. And I think it's really important that community family as entrepreneurs, that's what we're striving to build is to build wealth and legacy. And sometimes we forget the things that are truly important. So once again, thanks for, listening to us and <laughs> we'll see you in the next episode. See everyone later.